That hand clap cannot be for Jesus. Somebody glad God has kept us till today. Wave your hands. Shout Hosanna. It's not of him that will it. It's not of him that run it. It's of the Lord that showeth mercy. When I saw these wonderful students pumping out in thanksgiving, different categories, my heart was filled with joy. I know of people who started but could not finish. I was living in a place where somebody finished, went to youth service, finished the PPA on his way back before reporting. He lost his life. But God has kept us in the air, on the road, over the sea, under all forms of circumstances. And today, everyone here is celebrating either finalists or next levels. This is the Lord's doing. Is it not marvelous in your eyes? Wave your hands one more time and shout aloud, thank you, Jesus. And I make bold to declare to someone here, your testimony shall know no end. You will not have a better yesterday. And as the Lord lives, every one of you celebrating God today shall be very great. I count it an awesome privilege granted by God through our Father, the Chancellor, to be here and part of this thanksgiving slash anointing service. And I want to celebrate the chaplain, the chaplaincy, management and staff. I want to celebrate every one of us leaders at all levels for the great work God is doing here. We have a few moments together and I'm trusting God that these moments together shall be the best moments yet in your life. That amen is saying, let it be. Now say it well. I say, what will happen now shall constitute the best moments of someone's life yet. Lift up your right hand wherever you are. Say with me, I'm ready. My father, Send your word, change my world, take all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ. You believe it, shout a louder amen. amen. Give Jesus a big hand and please be seated in God's presence. Congratulate your neighbor left and right and remind the person you shall be very great. I have the assignment today to deal with a subject captioned, Engaging the Power of Praise. For a turn around. Engaging the power of praise. For a turn around. What do we mean by the word turn around? It means an abrupt and unexpected positive and favorable change. Somebody shared a testimony here. By the number of carryovers I have had, I couldn't dream of graduating with my seat. But something happened that caused another thing to happen. That caused another thing to happen. CNET did some review. Faith came on board. I saw myself where I am today. Sudden, abrupt, positive, and favorable change. So we can say engaging the power of praise for an abrupt, unexpected, positive, or favorable change. For someone here, you are returning with that dimension of change. In the name of Jesus Christ. Anchor scripture is Habakkuk chapter 3, beginning from verse 17 to 19. Habakkuk chapter 3, from verse 17 to 19. Although the fig tree shall not blossom, neither shall fruit be in the vines, the labor of the olive shall fail. The fields shall yield no meat. The flock shall be cut off from the fold. There shall be no herd in the stalls. Yet, I will rejoice. Somebody make some joyful noise here right now. I will joy in the God of my salvation. Verse 19 says, The Lord shall make my feet like hinds feet and shall make me to walk upon my high places. From no place to high places. That is, from nowhere. If it was from nowhere to somewhere, it was a testimony. But for this one, by rejoicing and praise, 
my God shall strengthen me and make my feet to walk upon my high places. Stretch forth your two hands towards the altar. From this moment, every step you take shall take you forward. In the name of Jesus Christ. Just like all other principles of scriptures, note that praise is designed for our supernatural manifestation. The principles of scriptures, every scripture is given for our profiting. Paul told Timothy. And so is the principle of praise. is given for our supernatural manifestation. Isaiah 8, 18 says, I and the children that God has given to me are for signs and for wonders. That is potential. We are for signs and wonders. It's one thing to be a potential. It's another thing to command manifestation. We are for signs and wonders. But praise is a tool given for the manifestation of your potential. I want to pray for somebody here. You will never be absent in your presence. These people, I'm not sure you're ready. Can I talk to you? I want to pray for someone here. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will never be absent in your presence. That is, I'm there. And God is saying, I'm looking for who to use. If you can't see me, oh God, I will see you. We are for signs and wonders. But God gave us praise as a tool to manifest it. Exodus chapter 15 verse 11. Who is like unto thee, glorious in holiness. Fearful in praises, doing wonders. Meaning that in praise, as we engage praise, we provoke God to activate our potentialities. To activate the lots of benefits in us. I heard of a woman called Hannah. And as I read of her story, my heart bled. The Bible says towards the end of that story that the woman was blessed by God to have a son called Samuel. And after Samuel, that woman had more children, more than five of them. That's a testimony. But I asked myself, how come this woman was barren for minimum of seven years? Because the co-wife had seven sons while she had none. And it meant that she was a carrier of more than six children yet barren. I want to decree over somebody here. Whatever wants you to be absent in your presence, today, praise will scatter it. Yeah. I like the way your amen is coming. It can come more powerful. Yeah. Example, we understand from scriptures that the more praiseful we are, the more honorable our lives become. What that means is that the more praiseful we are, the more shameproof we become. To be honorable is simply the opposite of being shameful. Honor is the opposite of shame or disgrace. In the name of Jesus, you will never suffer disgrace. The more praiseful we become, the more shame-proofed we become. The more far we become from disgrace. And be intentional about it. Not every believer is in honor. It's possible to be a born-again child of God and still be in shame and dishonor. Second Timothy chapter 2, in verse 20, the Bible says, But in a great house, in a church, in a chapel, in a school meant for egos, there are not only vessels of gold or silver, but also vessels of wood and of sand or earth. And it says some are to be honored, whereas others are to to be dishonored. So there are people in church whose end will be dishonor. That will be minus you. So it's for you to understand what it takes to be in the other divide of honor. And what does it take? Somebody shout praise. praise. Isaiah chapter 2 verse 30. The Bible says I will honor those that honor me. If you want honor, you can claim it. Honor is not achieved. Honor is bestowed. If you like, have five points. If they don't bestow honors degree on you, you can't get it. Some of you are going home with BNG honors, BSC honors. Am I correct? Even that honors is to be bestowed. Despite your CGPA, you are patiently waiting for convocation when they will stand here to bestow you with the honor. If not, there is no way you can prove you have it. The same way, genuine honor can only come from God. When God honors a man, nothing and no one can dishonor him. Is there somebody ready for that honor? 
the key to it is praise. Because according to 1 Samuel 2.30, God honors those that honor him. And how do I honor God? Psalms chapter 50 verse 23. Psalms chapter 50 verse 23. Whosoever offereth praise glorifieth God or honoreth God. And to him that ordereth his conversation aright, will I show the salvation of God. As you offer praise, you honor God. And as you honor God, you become a candidate for his honor. And when God honors you, you become honorable. That makes praise a ticket to a shame-proofed life. We also saw by word of introduction that the more praiseful we are, the more insight we gain. I like this one. It's particular to you as students, no matter your level right now. Insight is critical to exploits. Insight is what commands exploits. The Bible says in Daniel chapter 11 verse 30, they that do know their God shall be strong and they shall do what? Exploits. See you students, stretch your hands here. I want to decree the solutions this world have been waiting for shall proceed from the hands stretch forth here right now. Ah, am I talking to you? I said political solutions shall come from you. I said marital solutions shall come from you. Economic solutions shall come from you. Somebody say exploits. But exploits is a function of insight. Insight means inside information. Let me talk to you. Education is great, but greatly limited. There is no day education can match inspiration. Ah, yeah. The person that built the first university did not go to university. If he went to one, the one he built wouldn't have been the first. How did he build it? Not by going to university, but by catching inspiration. The person that built the first airplane did not fly one. He had not gone, ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. He had not gone up before. How did he get it? Not by education. Nobody could teach him. He got it by inspiration. Education is the access, is the act, gathering of information or learning from science, observation, and teachers. But inspiration is the download of information from the creator of science and teachers. There is no day a creature can outwit a creator. So check it. People that didn't go to school were in prison. Joseph by name. People that went to school, people that had charms, magicians, astrologers, scientists of Pharaoh. Egypt was the head of civilization on earth then. They lacked solution to the problem coming to Egypt. And Pharaoh said, Joseph, you know, go school. From childhood, they hated you. From your father's house to Potiphar's house as boy boy. From boy boy to prison. No chance for school. How can this thing be? Joseph said, there is a God in heaven. That downloads solutions. And that guy innovated crop genetics. Innovated preservative measures to store crops, pests. All this tomato pest is not from education. No. They copied it from inspiration. That was what made Daniel. In Daniel chapter 1, beginning from verse 17, the Bible says, and as for these four children, God gave them wisdom and knowledge. Who gave them? See you students talk. Now who gave them? Now let me ask you, let every devil get mad. Who will give you? Let the devils in your village get mad. Who will give you? Whether you are a two-pointer, three-pointer, four-pointer, one-pointer now, who is going to change your story? God gave them wisdom. Show me that scriptures. And skill in all learning. And Daniel had understanding in visions and dreams. They don't teach this one in school. Verse 18, very quickly, we are running to verse 20. Verse 18, now at the end of the days that the king had said, he should bring them in. Then the prince of the eunuchs brought them in before Nebuchadnezzar. Verse 19, and the king communed with them and tested them. But among all of them, none was found like Daniel, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah. 
that stood before the king. Look at verse 20, the result. And in all matters of wisdom, somebody say all. all. Wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them. He found these guys not first, not second. That is to say, they were first. There was no second, no third, no fourth, no fifth, no sixth, no seventh, no eighth, no ninth. They managed ten. Stretch your hands here. No matter the competition on earth, you and I shall remain ahead. No matter the competition on earth, by inspiration, you shall remain ahead. But how do you tap into that inspiration? Somebody shout praise. praise. I like the way you are shouting it praisefully now. Say praise. praise. Okay, you can demonstrate it. Praise oh. praise oh. Psalms chapter 100 verse 4. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise to download inside information. And in that is present, Psalm 16 verse 11, there is fullness of solutions. Solution means joy. You know, whenever you know the answer to a problem, your face changes in exam. Except you are a pretender. Especially when you don't want to help your neighbor. You see the answer. Ah, you know it. You do like this. <laughs> but ordinarily, when you check and you know the answer, <laughs> You look around and sing like the choir. Eze bube. <laughs> Am I talking to somebody here? From today, receive grace to live a praiseful life. In the name of Jesus Christ. Now, very quickly for today, let's look at a few turnaround keys domiciled in praise. So that you know that praise is more than a church program. Praise is more than calling departments to come and dance and some people are making mess of it. Some people are joking. Some people don't know what is in it. Let's look at some turnaround keys domiciled in praise. Today we are considering number one and that's the turnaround key of supernatural harvest. Can I hear somebody holler supernatural harvest? Praise is the gateway to a supernatural harvest from seed sown. Make no mistake, life, this life, I don't know about heaven, but this earth is governed by the mystery of seed and harvest time. In Genesis chapter 8 verse 22, the Bible speaking, it says, as long as this earth remains, among many principles that cannot change, one of them, he said, is seed time and harvest. And they have not changed till today. That means, by God's principles on earth, impute should determine output. Efforts should dis determine results or rewards. It means for our environment, reading well should mean passing well. Am I correct? It also means passing well or grasping good grades should mean having a great job. Or a great life. But how come? It's not always that way. As long as this earth remains, time and chance can happen to anyone. Even Jesus said it. Results and harvest is not automatic. In Matthew chapter 19 verse 30, he says, But many that were first shall become last. Ah, no, first in school should be first. To be employed. Ah. First in class should be greatest in life. But he says some first will become the last. And the last will become the first. Meaning that one can be diligent in church. And still not be distinguished in life. For not knowing what to do. One can be hard working. And not still fly high. <laughs> Ecclesiastes chapter 10 verse 15. The labor of the foolish wearied them, not knowing how to go to the city. They know what to do. They lack how to do it. They know what to do. They are doing it. But they end in frustration for lacking the know-how. In like manner, one can be seedful and fruitless. 
One can be seedful. Praise connects you to the harvest of seed sown. And you think it's a simple matter. <laughs> Better have a rethink. You can be seedful and still be empty in harvest. What do I mean by that? Without the God factor, anything negative can happen. Man can be seedful, but without the God factor, he can never be fruitful. I say it again. He can never be fruitful. Man can be seedful and still lack harvest. When I'm talking about fruitfulness here, or harvest, I'm not talking about children. No. Not just children. I'm not talking about making money. Because somebody can say, ah, how can you say that man can be hardworking and will not make money? You can make money and still lack harvest. I'm not talking about having fame and um, accolades and glory. Sars and mass, harvest of fruitfulness is more than children. It's more than money. If harvest in life is all about money and children and fame, then Solomon shouldn't have written Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 1 to 3. In his days, Solomon was the richest and the greatest king. And as a matter of fact, I think he had many children. Because for you to have 300 wives and 700 concubines, even if only half of them gave birth, you should have 500 children. Yet, look at his conclusion. And you know, the last words of a man is very key. Verse 1, please. The words of the preacher, Solomon, the son of David, king in glory. Verse 2. Vanity of vanities, said the preacher. Vanity of vanities. All my wives, all my concubines, all my wealth, all my glory that made the queen of Sheba pass out. Queen of Sheba came visiting Solomon. By the time he saw the glory of Solomon, she fainted. Solomon said, relax. I know the cure to fainting. Take her to hospital. After curing her, she returned. Solomon said, I hope you're fine now because we have not started. Yet, vanity. Vanity. If harvest or fruitfulness is all about glory and fame and followers in TikTok, on Facebook, on Twitter, if fruitfulness and harvest is all about that, Satan wouldn't have rebelled. Satan had some followers. Say, ay, 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 ay. Satan had some glory. I saw in heaven that God was domiciled there. And from my research, God is three persons in one. Help me. God the Father, God the Son, and who? God the Holy Ghost. Yet, despite their tripartite nature, Satan could control one third of the hosts of heaven. One third saw three in one and followed Satan. God was in control of two thirds. The Bible says when there was war in heaven, one third backed Satan. So Satan had followership. If you are having one third, when God has two thirds, shouldn't you be fulfilled? But minus God, there is nothing that can fill the void in creation. Everything came from him. So uproot yourself from him. Fulfillment and harvest ends. Somebody shout, I hear. Shout it louder. Say, I hear. This is where praise comes in. Praise is what brings harvest. And when I'm talking, talking about harvest, I mean fruition. Somebody shout fruition. Check your neighbor if he's sleeping. Please give him a big slap right now. You have permission. <laughs> Tell the person it's too early to start dying. <laughs> you can't be here in this kind of service and be sleeping. When we have a few minutes to go. To be fruitful, to have harvest, is to be fulfilled. Because you need to be full and filled before you can overflow. Am I correct? God created man. He says, be fruitful and do what? Multiply. So you have to be fruitful first before you will multiply. And to be fruitful means to be fulfilled, full and filled, and then multiply. That's where your fulfillment, your harvest in life is. Stretch your hands from where you are. From today, you shall command harvest. Amen. I say, you shall command harvest. Amen. This is where praise comes in. With praise, 
we secure the hand of God, which is the only assurance of true harvest, of true fulfillment, of true fruitfulness. We praise, we secure the hand of God, and we retain it as we continue in praise. And by that, we secure unending harvest because only his hand can bet fulfillment, fruitfulness, and harvest. So the psalmist will say in Psalm 67 from verse 5 to 7. Psalm 67 from verse 5 to 7. Let the people praise thee. Oh God, let all the people praise thee. I thought you would be doing the praise right now. <laughs> then and only then shall the earth yield her increase. Which meant they had planted in the earth. They had sown in the earth. Yet there was no increase. There was no harvest. But our God, even our God will bless us. Our God shall so much bless us with harvest that the ends of the earth will fear him. If you are ready for that harvest right now, jump on your feet, shout the loudest, Hosanna! I say, if you are ready for supernatural harvest, kindly jump up and shout, Hosanna! Take your seat. <laughs> are you blessed already? By giving, we sow, according to 2 Corinthians chapter 9, 6 to 8. In giving, we sow. He says, I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap sparingly. He that soweth bountifully shall reap bountifully. But he's talking about giving. Look at the next verse. Every man according as he has proposed in his heart, so let him give. Not grudgingly or of necessity. For God loveth a cheerful giver. And God, not man, not the earth that you sow to, <laughs> is able to make all grace abound toward you that ye always having, always having all sufficiency in all things may abound to every good work. So even when you are giving, you are sowing, but by speaking, you water the seed sown. Hebrews chapter 13 verse 15. By speaking, by speaking, that testimonial said, I caught faith and I began to declare that graduation 2022, 2023 is a reality. And today, it's happening. By speaking, we water our seed. However, it is only by praise shall we reap the harvest of that seed. Psalms chapter 67, verse 5 to 7. Psalms 67, verse 5 to 7. One more time, somebody wave your hands, shout aloud, hallelujah. hallelujah. So, praise is the missing link between seed sown Efforts made, certificates acquired, and harvest expected. Praise is the missing link between seed time and harvest time. In Joel chapter 1, verse 11 to 12. Joel chapter 1, 11 to 12. Be ashamed. Say with me, not me. You know, some things you say, God forbid. There are others that you are the one that will forbid. Be ashamed, O ye husband men. Cry, O ye vine dressers, for the wheat and for the barley, because the harvest of the field is perished. Why? Verse 12. The vine is dried up, the fig tree languished. Pomegranate tree, palm tree, apple tree, all the trees of the field are withered. They were supposed to fruit by your effort, by your hard work, by your results. They were supposed to yield harvest, but they are withered because joy Rejoicing and praise is withered from the heart of men. That's to say, praise not engaged is harvest lost. Therefore, I want to charge you, as you are graduating or as you are stepping into the next class, consciously cultivate a lifestyle of praise. Make it intentional that any time is praise time, you remind yourself, this is my harvest time. Oh, I refuse to lose my harvest. Chance can happen to any man no, without God. Let me provoke his hand now on my life. Because with God, nobody can be against me. When you are, when choir was ministering, tears began to roll out of my eyes. Eze Bubesia. Now, who dash monkey banana? Who see me? What is me? As you are demonst as is in your heart, rejoicing in God, you are securing his hand. And his hand brings harvest. Let me shock somebody here. So is seed without God there will be no harvest. But with God, there can be harvest even before the seed comes. The first seed that germinated, who sowed it? <laughs> 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 
Higher. Wherever you are right now, wave your hands again and shout, Hosanna. Tell your neighbor, I'm not mad. I'm not wasting my life. I just did some investment. Watch out. Say, I hear. Okay, very quickly, as we wrap up. Number two, what is the second turnaround key? Domicide in praise. Supernatural increase and multiplication answers to praise. I like this one. I want to pray for somebody here. In the day of competition, may God increase you above your peers. Amen. And when the competition becomes very stiff, may God change gear from addition to multiplication. <laughs> you don't need to be bigger than the competitor. Just become godder than the competitor. Everything assumes the state of the multiplying factor. Answer my question, students. 100 times 1 equals what? 200 times 1 equals what? 400 times 0 equals what? The thing that matters is what is multiplying it. But 0 times God equals what? Everything. Can I prove it to you? Genesis chapter 1. In the beginning, the earth was without form and void. Darkness covered. Shapelessness everywhere. Nothing upon nothing upon nothing. Times God. Look at verse 31. Everything appeared, including your great-grandfather. <laughs> so don't judge me by my certificate alone. I will get it. It's important. Don't judge me by my looks alone. I don't think Esther was the finest. Esther didn't even know how to catch work. Maybe she was lion walking. She didn't know what to wear. It was the favor of God. As the girl appeared, the king said, close the door. Close the door. Close the door. I want to decree over you. As you assume this praise life, I see God multiplying you. Praise is the key to supernatural addition Increase and what? Multiplication. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 19. It says, Out of them shall proceed thanksgiving and the voice of them that make merry. And I, God, will multiply them. And they shall not be few. Meaning that you can be multiplied and still be few. You can be first class and be riding taxi. Then I will glorify them and they shall not be small. Meaning that you can be put in position and still lack honor. When God refuses to honor you, nothing men do can honor you. Hiya. But when God is on your side, he begins to multiply you. And you need it because planting is good. Working hard is good. However, increase is not possible. Harvest is not possible except from God. And I've told you that harvest is not just making money. You can make money and still be committing suicide. How come some celebrities are still dying of suicide? How come? Nothing can fill the voidity created by lack of divinity. Nothing, nothing. Civility cannot try it. To think that there is no God, the Bible concludes your matter as a mumu. The Mumu city is square. I mean. First Corinthians chapter 3. Time is gone. Verse 6 and 7. Look at how Paul, and when Paul is talking, excuse me, graduates and undergraduates, when Paul is talking, listen. The guy is a lawyer, an architect, an apostle. The guy doesn't do miracles. He does special miracles. So when people are doing miracles, he will come and say, have you finished? Bring the special cases. The guy doesn't talk scriptures. He speaks mysteries. The guy doesn't use experience. He uses inspiration. He was not married, but he is the anchor source of the scripture that defines marriage. Husband, love your wife. Where did you learn it? Relax. So when he's talking, calm down. In 1 Corinthians chapter 3, he told the Corinthian church, and Corinthian church happened to be like America then. In civility, they were high there. He says, I have planted, <laughs> I'm a man. 
Apollos watered. He's a man. But let me tell you the truth. Even me, I know. Only God gave the increase. So then, neither is he that planted anything. Give me that scripture, please. Nor he that watered it. But God that giveth the increase. Verse 8. Everybody shout it loud and clear. One to go. Verse 8. So you are waiting to receive. It's not by your power. It's the one he gives you <laughs> that you can receive. If he judges you disqualified, you lack, you miss, you goof. So praise is a divine factory for unending gains and profiting. As you enter business, as you enter your career, make sure you live a lifestyle of praise. Somebody shout all weather praise. Let me mention that. In Psalms 34 verse 1, David gave us the principles and syllables of praise. I will bless the Lord at some times. Eh? During rainy season. When I'm feeling good. Because he's the reason why it's not worse. And he's the only reason why it can be better. Let me ask you one question before I leave this point. Do you breathe? Did you breathe yesterday? Are you breathing now? Yeah. Will you breathe tomorrow? Yeah. What about during rainy season? Yeah. What about during dry season? Yeah. What about if you have malaria? Yeah. What about if you fail exam? Yeah. You still breathe? Yeah. Wait, wait. What about if you have kata? Yeah. Two nose kata. Yeah. If the nose block, you use your mouth. <laughs> because it is breath that will sustain you to improve on the result. The same way, praise should be seen as a factory for unending profit. Even if I lost today, David is saying, I will bless the Lord at all times. No wonder David's rebound in the basketball of destiny has not been matched. The guy is classified as one that never lost a battle, yet he lost many. Why? He will always rebound, pursue, overtake, and do what? Recover all. What's his secret? I will bless the Lord at all times. In First Samuel chapter 30, they took his wife, took his children, burned down the city, and he was downcast and saw how men wanted to stone him to death. David encouraged himself in the Lord and began to engage the mystery of praise. God multiplied him. He pursued, overtook, and recovered all. Stretch your hands. No matter the situation in life, you will remain the winner. Amen. All right, finally, praise provokes supernatural breakthroughs. A.K.A. open doors. And no one does open doors like God. In Isaiah chapter 45, 1 to 3. Isaiah 45, 1 to 3. The Bible says, Thus saith the Lord to his anointed Cyrus, whose right hand I have holden to subdue nations before him. And I will lose the lions of kings to open before him the two leaf gates. That's what breakthrough means. Supernatural breakthrough means open doors. And the gates shall not be shut. Verse 2. I will go before him, make the crooked crooked place is stretched, I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut asunder the bars of iron. Verse 3, everybody want to go. I will give and hidden riches of secret places. I don't care the closed door you have seen or you will see. If you want to continue to enjoy continuous open doors, connect with God in praise. He knows how to do it. I saw in scriptures that sometimes God can choose to open your door and bring you out. In Acts chapter 12 verse 10, God opened the door and brought Peter out of prison. Fine. Other times, he can choose to uproot the door. That's what is happening for some people here. Maybe there has been some doors of limitation stopping your family from attaining certain heights. God will not just open the door for you. Because of you, he will uproot it. So, the door shall never exist again. In Judges chapter 16 verse 3, the Bible talking about Samson. Judges chapter 16 verse 3. Samson lay till midnight and arose at midnight and took the door because they locked the gate against him. He took the door of the gate of the city plus the pillars so that there can be a construction and went away with them and put them upon his shoulders and carried them up to the hilltop so that the people woke up and they saw their door open. They wanted to close it. No door. They wanted to repair it. The bars are gone. We don't finish. Good news. 
there is another way he can do it. He can choose to despise the door. In the time of resurrection, I saw about the account of Jesus. In the book of John, chapter 20, verse 26, the Bible says concerning Jesus, when Thomas was doubting him, they were in a room enclosed, and Jesus walked in, the doors being shut. Therefore, I want to decree by these three examples, none of you here shall face closed doors in life. Yeah. If they close the door, God will break it open. Yeah. If he cannot break it open, he will uproot it. Yeah. If he cannot uproot it, you will disappear into the room. Yeah. And that makes praise your access to your highways in life. As we read in Habakkuk chapter 3, verse 17 to 19, remember he said, as I praise God, in spite of my situation, he will take me to my high places. Somebody, ready right now, say with me, I'm going to my high places. If I ask you what kind of praise, say with me, all weather praise. Shout it louder, all weather praise. Sacrificial praise. In season and out of season. But the praise of a sinner does not amount to anything before God. Proverbs 15 verse 8. The sacrifice of a sinner is an abomination before God. I want to pray for very few people because miracles are about to start as we release the anointing in praise. Everybody stand to your feet, please. In honor of Jesus, please. Stand to your feet. All eyes closed, all heads bowed. Stand to your feet. Just give God the honor of two, three minutes. If you are here and you are not born again, meaning that you are not sure that if you die today, you are going to heaven. I want to pray for you very quickly. Or you have given your life to Christ, but you backslid at some point. I want to pray for you very quickly. Put your right hand on your chest. All eyes closed, all heads bowed. You are at a very critical stage of your life. You are either entering the next class, the next level, or you are graduating. It's time to connect with God, the God factor, the winning factor. You want to make Jesus your Lord for the first time or you want to return to him like the prodigal son. Put your right hand on your chest. Say with me wherever you are right now, my father in heaven, forgive my sins. I believe that Jesus Christ is your gift for my salvation. By his death and resurrection, I receive redemption. Wash me with his blood and please keep me in the faith. I am born again for life. In Jesus' awesome name, amen. You pray that prayer with me. Be the first to run to the altar right now. Run to the altar right now. God bless you as we get ready to partake of the anointing. Keep coming, keep coming, keep coming, keep coming. Keep coming right now, keep coming right now, keep coming right now. Very quickly, very quickly, be on your way. Be on your way, be on your way, be on your way. You are walking out on the devil, walking out on closed doors. You are walking out on barrenness, fruitlessness. Be on your way, rush right now, rush right now. In case you came with a bottle of oil, we are partaking the oil from the altar. I'd like you to lift it up as we bless this one. The blessing of God will rest upon it. In the name of Jesus Christ right now, by the revelation of 1 Samuel chapter 16 verse 13, when the oil was poured on the head of David, the spirit of the Lord came upon him. And in Isaiah chapter 61, we are told of the spirit of joy, the oil of gladness. Now I decree every oil present here today, blessed in the name of Jesus Christ, sanctified in the name of Jesus Christ. That day the yoke shall be destroyed by the anointing. Every yoke of bitterness, heaviness, burdensomeness, stalling your growth, spoiling your increases, scattering what God is gathering in your life. By this anointing, they are destroyed. Be healed, spirit, soul, and body. Receive the garment of praise. Enjoy the oil of gladness. Reap the fruits of your labor in Jesus' awesome name. We release the oil right now. We declare them blessed. And as you receive it, your lives will never be the same again. All of you in front, congratulations for making this decision. Jesus loves you. 
and I decree that his hand will rest upon you for life in the name of Jesus Christ. Glory to God. Now, we will be singing and demonstrating what we have learned as we partake of the anointing. Make sure that God sees your heart. Make sure that God experiences your praise on the throne. And as your praise goes up, God will come down and your harvest will come up. Somebody blessed, shout, I am blessed.